Welcome to the Heinrich Bell Foundation, where you were invited to speak about Afghanistan's youth in transition. What different types of groups and organizations are there? And what are the issues they are mobilizing for? I am Abdullah Atai, uh, working as program coordinator for Heinrich Bell Foundation and since 2013 onwards. I have been engaged with uh, various uh, youth groups in Afghanistan and I'm also representing the um, uh, Solidarity Network for Change here. As 2014 was approaching, uh, there was uh, a huge concerns among Afghan society regarding to the scenarios that will take place in 2014 and onwards. Therefore, uh, hundreds of uh, youth groups and networks uh, have been you know, established and emerged across the countries. Uh, they are mostly raising their voice and taking, uh, raising their voice with regards to peace process, with regard to elections, and uh, taking responsibility for the uh, transition period. Uh, they, they are the new generation, the first generation who entered into an open society and uh, involved with uh, different socio-political movements uh, like Afghanistan 400, like uh, Afghanistan Analysis Awareness, ATRI and Solidarity Network for Change, Third Trend, uh, New Lines. They are, uh, these organizations are you know, uh, a sample of you know, thousands or hundreds of youth groups that are working in Afghanistan. The youth in Afghanistan can be a game changer, but there is also a big risk to it, as there are a lot of violent youth groups too. How can these forces be channeled into something positive? My name is Reza Fazli. I'm a member of uh, Afghanistan Analysis and Awareness which is a, a young group uh, uh, in Afghanistan and represents uh, the interests of the young people. I'm also a researcher with the Liaison Office, an Afghan research organizations, organization. Uh, Afghanistan has one of the uh, largest youthful population in the world. Around uh, 65% 65 to 70 percent of the Afghan population is below the age of 25. Now, this large group of young people represents a big opportunity for positive change uh, in Afghanistan, but it also carries a major risk if the energies uh, and talents of the young people are not channeled into the into a constructive uh, course the youth groups which exist right now which have uh, emerged in afghanistan try to uh, provide a platform for these uh, different uh, groups of the youth to come together uh, uh, discuss issues of concern identify uh, common goals define their vision uh, but also identify uh, the challenges that we are facing. Now, uh, the role of youth uh, between to the end of 2014 and 2024, uh, something we call a period that we call the transformation decade, is far more prominent than in the past years. It's expected that the Afghan population uh, manage their affairs and help Afghanistan stand on its feet. Protect itself, uh, provide uh, uh, the space for the democratic system that we have to gain root and, and become a part of the social and political interaction in our country. Having said that, the youth, the young people of Afghanistan with the new education and skills that they have acquired during the past 12 years are best positioned to contribute towards stability uh, uh, in Afghanistan and also help Afghanistan uh, grow economically 
and uh, politically. Is it possible that the youth groups play a major role in Afghan politics? The older generation of leaders will not give us that power. We have to fight for, uh, for taking leadership positions in Afghanistan. Uh, that's the, uh, the uh, essence of politics. But uh, through democratic means, we, I should emphasize that uh, this generation do not believe so much in violence because uh, the young generation of Afghans uh, have survived a, a long period of uh, traumatic uh, war. I think it's for the uh, benefit of uh, Afghanistan uh, when the older generation with their experience uh, assess the younger generation with their energy and the new skills and knowledge that the younger generation of Afghans have to build Afghanistan. I think the new generation of Afghans without full support and cooperation of the older generation cannot really realize fully realize their potential and help Afghanistan reach stability and uh, grow economically. There is a big difference regarding the situation of the youth in the cities compared to the one in rural areas and small villages. How does the work of these different youth groups look like and how are you trying to bring them together? Mm, I'm Ahmed Kawuz Hazrati. I'm a member of uh, Afghanistan 1400 uh, Youth Civic Political Movement. We have one policy in our organization, Afghanistan 1400, that we have our representative offices in uh, all the 34 provinces of the country, so that through them we can have a contact and relationship with those uh, this youth movements um, in provinces and in the uh, countryside. Uh, but uh, in January 2014, we started a, a youth dialogue forum, uh, which in this forum we had we gathered around 10 uh, youth movements, uh, not only on all of them from the cities, but also some of them who are mainly involved in, in provinces uh, rather than the cities. By interaction with them and by just um, talking and communicating with them, we observed that there is uh, th this challenge and this, this gap can be overcome by, by having close relationship with these youth movements who are based in, in provincial areas. So then what we did, we just um, uh, held different informal meetings with these groups and uh, we started a kind of informal dialogue with them to reach to a platform uh, so that the, all these groups, whether they are staying in cities or in provinces, uh, have kind of relationship with each other and on some general causes uh, they can get together and, and, and uh, raise their voices uh, together with each other. This is a main challenge that for, for youth movements to uh, especially those who are living, uh, living in, in rural areas that uh, they, they are limited facilities and access to uh, media, to social media and uh, for instance education and they are mainly influenced by radical forces uh, so, but we are trying to use these uh, tools that I discussed and to reach them and um, to, to include them among, among these youth movements. What is the situation like for young students and how does the common education program look like? Uh, my name is uh, Grant Hewald. I'm a member of Afghanistan 1400. There is a huge capacity in the curriculum to uh, fundamentalize these students. There are, there's a huge capacity in the curriculum uh, to uh, teach and taught these uh, youth in a way that they couldn't gain the marketable skills. Uh, for instance, there is uh, an obligation for the university students to study uh, uh, an Islamic religious subject for all over four years of a BA degree. Uh, this fundamentalization uh, does not remain in the stage. In the education university where these students are uh, becoming the uh, future teachers, uh, they are uh, conveying this uh, fundamentalistic approaches to their own students. 
and and this become a chain of uh, fundamentalization. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, on the one hand, the use providers or Afghanistan with a major opportunity uh, uh, to go towards uh, long-term peace and uh, uh, prosperity. On the other hand, this, uh, pr the presence of a very large number of youth also presents us with the risk. If we do not tap into the energies and knowledge and willingness of the younger people, uh, for the development of Afghanistan and uh, long-term peace, then we risk leaving the young population to the mercy of radical groups uh, to be mobilized in militias or uh, uh, by militia groups or insurgents and used against the stability of Afghanistan. So it is uh, critically important uh, for Afghanistan uh, to pay attention it's important for the Afghan government to pay sufficient attention to its young population. As one woman, Mariam Safi, was invited to come to Berlin and didn't get a visa, maybe you could give us an insight on her work. Mr. Atai, what are the specific subjects women are addressing in their organizations? By international interventions, one of the biggest achievements in Afghan society is uh, women participation in social and political processes. Uh, after 2001, we have witnessed that uh, thousands of women uh, are enrolled themselves in uh, schools and universities. And most of the women are now leading civil society organizations. Furthermore, women are very active in media and government and other bodies. Uh, we have three women ministers in executive branch, 28% of the parliament members in upper house and lower house are women, 22% of civil servants are coming from the women. There is a very big network which is called Afghanistan uh, Afghan Women Network which has you know, uh, offices and members across the 34 provinces of Afghanistan. What would you expect the international community or civil society organizations to do in this process? Interaction with uh, young groups, youth groups in Afghanistan, keeping them engaged in, in, uh, 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 in uh, in decision-making processes and, and stuff like that about Afghanistan by international community are key stuff that, that can support uh, uh, the youth nationally and internationally and give them the voice to, to uh, have their own say uh, uh, for the future developments.